party members. So very soon I am going to be back from the Wild Hunt Lab event that I have been prepping for for some months and I am going to be dying to tell you all about it. However, I still need to finish putting my costume together. When I'm building a costume for a one-shot event, it really helps me to keep three basic things in mind. I call these my three C's of costuming, which is colour, comfort and class. By keeping these three things in mind while I'm planning and putting my costume together, it allows me to keep a really good and easy track of how exactly I want to look. And I'm about to tell you how you can use these three things as well. Number one, colour. Colour is probably one of the most important key aspects of your costume, and that is because the language of colour is diverse and universal. People use colour to communicate all sorts of different things, whether that be emotion, cultures, or even things like secret messages. There is so much you can say about your character just from the colours that you choose for them to wear. You can signify a lot about things like your character's personality. If you're playing a warm, bubbly character, then maybe you want to reflect that in a warm colour palette. On the other hand, if you're playing someone who is a little bit more standoff, a little bit more further away from the crowd, a little bit more reserved, maybe you would intend to go for a cooler colour palette. You can look at the environment your character is living in. Do they want to stand out from it and draw attention to themselves? Or do they want to shy away and be a little bit more reserved? All of this can be shown through the colours they choose to wear. If your character doesn't want to stand out, they might seek out complementary colours that do blend into each other, make things a little bit more reserved. But if they want to stand out, they may go for contrasting colours to so show off that brightness. For the Wild Hunt, I am playing a French revolutionary Little Red Riding Hood, which brings a very specific colour palette to mind. French patriotism during the French Revolution means that the colours red, white and blue are absolutely going to be play a massive part of my character design and probably have some dull browns thrown in for, you know, practicality's sake. I really wanted to have the classic red hood for my costume to bring in that red riding hood theme. So I got this one from Epic Armoury. It is the Altair hood and I had to buy it because it reminded me way too much of Assassin's Creed Unity, which has been a massive inspiration uh, for this costume design. However, as my character is also a monster hunter, I decided that I should probably also wear a lot of blues to help blend into the shadows a little bit more. You don't really want to be standing out when you're, you know, you're trying to hunt vampires and werewolves down in the dead of night. So I went on Amazon and I found this waistcoat for about £20. I really love the double-breasted look and the fact that it has all these beautiful gold buttons. Uh, I thought it looked really uh, classic for the part of a French Revolutionary and also just really went with the Red Hood very well. It may not necessarily be well historically accurate, but looking at it, it brought the French Revolution to mind and that's all I really want in life. Number two, comfort. So I'm going to pre be presuming that you are going to be wearing your costume for more than 30 minutes because that's pretty much about as long as I can go in an uncomfortable costume. When you are laughing and delving into a character, the last thing you want to be thinking about constantly is how your character looks. By the time you start playing, you should already know that you look great and feel great in your costume and that should allow you to focus on the game at hand. So when planning your costume, think constantly about what you need to feel awesome and feel comfortable in your costume. So when I started dressing myself up, I started with some really comfy underlayers. I have this epic armory pirate blouse that I have owned for a while. I really love it because it is really, really loose on top and it has these strings that I can tighten it up to whatever my comfort level is at the time I'm wearing it. On the bottom, I just wore some cheap brown leggings that I got off Amazon. And I was definitely thinking of my own personal comfort over historical accurateness when I was wearing them uh, because, you know, they come on comfy, they hold in things that, you know, I feel awkward about when I'm on camera. Uh, they're nice and stretchy, so are easy to move in. And because they're gonna be under other layers anyway, um, I didn't care too much that uh, they weren't historically accurate. And I finished the underlayers with my trusted uh, boot covers that I got from Dark Blade LARP a while back. Uh, these are singularly the best things I have ever bought for LARP because uh, they're tailored to me so they fit my overly chunky legs perfectly. 
And whenever I'm wearing them, I instantly feel more in the LARP mindset, which is what I want to have in every aspect of my life. It's a wonder I don't wear them every day. So base layers are done. I'm comfy, I'm happy, I'm in that LARP frame of mind that I want to be in. Next bit. So truthfully, I am rather self-conscious about the shape of my legs, the shape of my hips and I decided that I kind of wanted to disguise that a little bit just for my own peace of mind. So I wore this skirt that I bought from Holy Clothing a while back. Uh, it does not fit me anymore. Um, I have lost weight since I bought it and frankly it was a bit big on me when I originally got it anyway. Um, but that means it kind of falls down a lot. So I put it on and I wore a belt over the top just to cinch it into my waist and so it wouldn't you know, drop off into the unknown. And it gives me a much more flowy silhouette, which I'm much less conscious about, and I feel great in. And by slight happenstance, the colour matched my waistcoat pretty well, to the point where it almost looked like it was a singular piece. And number three, class. Now, I do not mean the class system that seems to still dominate modern society as if we're still living in 1813. I am talking about your character class. This is role play after all. Now, you may not be playing a traditional character class a la, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, but it is a really good feeling when people look at you and immediately go, oh, I know what you're playing. Having to explain your costume does kind of take away from the magic of role play. So as I am playing a French revolutionary, I want that to come across very blatantly. So the very first thing I bought was this rosette, which is known as the Cockade of France. I bought it from Etsy from this little shop, which I will put here right now uh, because I don't want to mispronounce their wonderful name and butcher it when they have such an amazing shop with amazing things in it. The Cockade of France is a very identifiable symbol from a very well-known piece of history and should immediately bring that to mind and without anyone really being able to, you know, misunderstand. I've also thrown on my trusty leather hero belt, which I got from Dark Blade Up. It looks a bit like armor. It gives that sort of really nice fighty look on it. And it also gives me a great place to, you know, stick all my stuff in so I don't have to lug a bag around with me all night. And it also adds to that Assassin's Creed look, which I like oh so much. And to complete the look, I have a couple of LARP safe guns. <laughs> One of them I got from Dark Blade LARP, in case you haven't noticed, I shop there a lot because they have a lot of really, really cool things. And the other one I got from a shop called LARP In. They absolutely don't fire anything. Their barrels are completely solid, which is what makes them LARP safe. But they do make a rather good crack when you uh, pull the trigger. They both look really, really cool. They each cost me about 40 pounds, which is more than I wanted to spend really. But hey, I will use them for future events. So, you know, in the long term, it's probably a decent investment. And the long and the short of it, that's pretty much how the Three Seas of Costuming works. And this is my final costume. I think I look absolutely epic in it. I really feel super comfy. And I can't wait for this LARP. I am so, so excited. I can't wait to get to the Wild Hunt. I can't wait to come back and tell you lot all about it. I will get that video up as soon as I can. Please take care, especially with all the stuff that is going on in the world right now. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And I will see you on a battlefield soon.